Hi there, uh, this is Mr. Dulas here, and I'm going to go over some uh, simple harmonic motion. Uh, if you see, I've got a couple of scenarios here uh, pictured from the uh, Pearson Prentice Halt uh, physics text that uh, demonstrate a couple examples of simple harmonic motion. Uh, and the top right, you see an equation that I plan on deriving first, and then I'm going to go through and, and uh, describe the picture on the left, uh, circular motion and and how that is simple harmonic motion. So first, I'm actually going to describe it in terms of the spring, which is here on the right, and then I'll go through and describe it and how it uh, can be viewed as uh, simple harmonic motion when you view a circular motion from a side view angle. So let's start with the spring. You notice I'm exposing a couple of equations here that I'm going to get to those as well, but uh, I think that I can go ahead and erase those and get, get going here. All right, so what I can do is I can start off by saying that the uh, total mechanical energy of this spring system at any moment in time is going to be equal to one-half mv squared plus uh, one-half kx squared, which in turn is going to equal one-half ka squared, basically meaning that the total mechanical energy, uh, let's kind of think back to, let's say, a pendulum or anything like that, the total mechanical energy at any moment in time will equal its kinetic energy plus its potential energy, that's elastic potential. And this here expresses it as in when it's off all the way to the right, it's at its maximum displacement, which is amplitude for A. And at that maximum amplitude, it's going to have all of its energy built up in potential energy, just like a pendulum when it reaches its highest height all the energy it has is going to be in that potential energy, and you can equate all the energy it has at any moment in time to that exactly. The thing I'm going to look to do is to solve for uh, v squared here. So, with that in mind, I'm going to uh, rewrite this. I don't need the uh, energy expression any further. So I'm going to say that one half, and let me change colors back to my black. So I'm going to say that one-half mv squared is equal to one-half ka squared minus one-half uh, kx squared. Make that look a little better. All right, there we go. And uh, then from there we can uh, factor out one-half k from right here. So that's what we'll be doing. We will say that the one-half mv squared equals, that's a v, uh, one-half k, and then that's going to be a squared minus x squared, and throw our parentheses in there. And if you notice, we can cancel the, the one-half, and then we just simply divide each side by m. So I'm going to rewrite that. I've got uh, v squared equals k times a squared minus x squared over m. So now I've expressed it in terms of v squared. Uh, in fact, let me rewrite this. Let me just kind of change the way this is being expressed. Uh, so that way I've got k over m times uh, a squared minus x squared, I'm leaving those in parentheses. What I want to do now is I'm going to factor out the, the a squared, which is, will seem kind of strange, but uh, that will become useful to us in a, in a little bit. So I've got v squared equals k over m times a squared times 1 minus x squared over a squared. And if you look at it, multiply a squared back through, uh, you'll get the same as the above expression. All right, now, uh, kind of from the first thing I had expressed up here, I can say that since 1 half mv squared max, meaning my maximum velocity, uh, if I go up, that would be at uh, this moment in time here as it's moving, let's say, in that direction, it would have its maximum velocity. Therefore, all of its energy is built up in kinetic. And then when it's over here on its greatest uh, displacement, A, amplitude, it would be all potential energy. And we can equate those two together. So we can say that this v 
this energy here, the kinetic energy, is equal to one half k a squared. And so solving for v max squared, uh, divide each side by one half uh, m. So I have v max squared equals one half k a squared. Let me scroll down a little. Divided by one half m. The one halves cancel, so it leaves me with k a squared over m. And you can notice that should look pretty familiar. I have this here and this here, so I can substitute my v max squared in for k over m times a squared. That brings me to, and let me extend the page a bit here. So v squared equals v max squared times 1 minus x squared over a squared. And lastly, if I take the square root of each side, that would leave me with v equals v max. So the squares go away there. And uh, the square root of 1 minus x squared over a squared. So square root of 1 minus x squared over a squared. This also should, let me leave a little bit more space, this also should be a plus or minus here because it can be moving in a negative direction. So given a uh, negative velocity, but with the square root, that would not be expressed uh, uh, properly. So you need to pay attention to the direction. All right, now that I've expressed velocity with simple harmonic motion uh, as a function of displacement, uh, when compared to its maximum amplitude, here we have a, a spring system. And like I said, we have something that is similar uh, mathematically for circular motion when viewed from the side. And so what we have here is at this location, this object is moving. It is moving along the tangent, and so its tangential velocity is equal to v max. That is its maximum velocity, because when it is at this location, here it is moving that way. From this person's point of view, it would be moving at its maximum velocity, which is its tangential. It also would have that same velocity here as it's moving in that direction. It would have its least velocity here moving here. In fact, its velocity would be momentarily zero from this person's perspective. Of course, these two locations correspond to its location here viewed from the side, where it has its maximum velocity viewed from the side, uh, velocity v. And then these two locations correspond here, where it would have the least velocity but the greatest acceleration and greatest force, at least when you relate it to a spring system. So a spring system, when it, had it has its greatest displacement off to the side, that is when the spring is giving its greatest force in that direction. So we will relate the two systems as if they are equivalent because they do exhibit the same behavior visually when viewed from the side. So we can equate them mathematically. So what I can say is that the v max will equal the uh, velocity along the tangent, and v will equal the velocity from the side view. So just keep that in mind. OK, so now keeping in mind that these two systems will be mathematically equivalent, at least from the side view. And uh, so let's kind of hide our spring system for a moment. And let's say that the velocity max is equal to 2 pi r over period. Basically saying it's the circumference over the time it takes for it to go around in the circle because it's the path that it takes, the circumference, divided by the time it takes to move along that path. And since r is equivalent to the amplitude viewed from the side angle, we can then say that it's 2 pi a over period. 
And I'll try to say uh, period for big T rather than T because that's just confusing with small t, which is different because that's some arbitrary period of time that has passed. We can then in turn say that this is equal to 2 pi a times f. Uh, since, let's just say since, t is equal to 1 over f and vice versa. I'm not going to use the uh, 2 pi a f, uh, so I, let me just kind of cross that out. I don't want to erase it because that can be useful. It's a good equation to have, but let's move on. So let me solve for period in terms of V max and amplitude. So we've got uh, multiply each side by T and then divide by V max. So uh, period, excuse me, period is equal to 2 pi A over V max. And now what I can say is that since the uh, total energy we have at maximum displacement, one half Ka squared is equal to the energy, kinetic energy, at maximum velocity. So we have m v max squared. Since that's true, we can solve for a over v max. Is what I'm going to get to. One half cancels out from each side. I'm going to divide each side by k, so a squared equals uh, m times v max squared over k, and then I'll take the square root of each side. I can also pull out the m and the k together, so that way they look a little bit cleaner. So I'll do that as well. Uh, and then also divide each side by v max squared. So if I have a squared over max squared equals m over k, and then take the square root of each side, so I will get that expression right there. A little bit better. A lot better. So now that I have uh, a over v max equals the square root of is looking terrible. Let's fix it. There we go. Uh, square root of m over k. And notice that I have the a over v max up here. So I'm going to substitute. And that will be oh, not the color I wanted. T equals 2 pi times the square root of m over k. Okay, so this is really the equation I was trying to get to. There we go. And uh, what I can say here is that this is because of the relationship uh, of simple harmonic motion between a spring and circular motion when viewed from the side. Since uh, t is equal to 1 over frequency, or period is equal to 1 over frequency, I can then also express this uh, in terms of frequency, so that frequency is equal to uh, 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m. So I'm going to use that as well. Notice that uh, period or frequency is independent of amplitude. We do not have amplitude in these equations any longer. So basically what we're saying here is, let's look at this one, that the time it takes for it to go back and forth is dependent on the mass of the object attached to the spring, which makes perfect sense. If we make a larger mass, it's going to take longer for it to go back and forth. And of course, the spring constant of the spring. Uh, so the, these, these things should make uh, good, good sense. All right, let's look at position as a function of time. And if you uh, look at our 
circular motion viewed from above here. We have x, the distance of x, and we have the distance of a. So this is our a, and from here to here is our x. x is the displacement at any moment in time when viewed from the side. So that's going to be the cosine of this angle theta here. And then amplitude is going to be the maximum displacement, uh, which is the radius of the circle, uh, which is a, a consistent value. With this, we can say that the cosine of angle theta is, of course, equal to the adjacent over the hypotenuse. And so when looking at this, we are looking at this triangle here. So we will say that that's going to be equal to x over a. x over a is going to be cosine theta. And then solving for x, we would just multiply a by each side. So we will say that the cosine of angle theta times a is, of course, equal to x. If you recall from uh, rotational motion, uh, angular velocity, which is uh, represented by the letter omega, is going to be equal to the angle theta over time. Uh, remember that the angle theta is going to be measured in radians and time in seconds. Uh, so omega will be measured in radians per second. Multiply each side by t, and we can say that omega t is equal to theta measured in radians. So we're going to take this omega t and plug that in for this value here. So we'll say that the cosine of angle omega t is equal to x. Oh, excuse me, times a is equal to x. And continuing on, uh, since we can say that omega is equal to uh, 2 pi radians over a period, because it's going to go around 2 pi radians for every cycle, and by definition, period is the time it takes for it to go around once, so that's going to be 2 pi radians per uh, unit time. And with that, we can then substitute in uh, this value in for the omega up here. So we'll say that the cosine of angle 2 pi times t over period, and make that parenthesis a bit larger, uh, times a is equal to x. Or, since remember t is equal to 1 over f, we can say that uh, x is equal to the cosine of 2 pi ft times a. Oh, and uh, make uh, very clear, be careful that you put your parentheses uh, so that way the 2 pi ft is within the parentheses because that the cosine needs to apply to that because that replaces angle theta. And so this assumes, this all assumes that the velocity at time zero uh, is equal to zero. And the displacement is at the maximum amplitude a. So basically what we're saying is, let's say that we pull this out again. Let me take a look at it. So if this is pulled out to some maximum displacement, when time starts, it is released at its maximum displacement. That is when the stopwatch is started and it starts to undergo its uh, it's simple harmonic motion from that moment in time from maximum displacement. Its velocity is zero to start, and it accelerates because of the spring itself. All of these things must be assumed for it to be a cosine function here. We could say it would be a sine function with a, a bit of a couple small changes. So let's take a look at that. All right, so if we were to draw the cosine function here, you know that cosine starts at a positive value and it tracks something along these lines looking something like that, which actually is better than what I thought I'd draw. If we wanted to make this a sine function, all we would have to do, and, and keep in mind that the distance between these two locations is one wavelength, 
uh, of course, from here to here is the amplitude A, graphically. That is our amplitude A. And so if we wanted to, uh, to shift this, we actually can. We can extend, we can move the wave itself to the right one quarter wavelength. So what I'm going to do is, it'll be a little bit easier for me, actually. Actually, what I can do is I can shift. I can shift the wave itself to the right by one quarter wavelength and make that connection. Uh, making this a sine function. And you're like, well, now wait a minute, you can't do that. You can't just turn cosine into sine. Well, we can if we stipulate a few, uh, a few things here. If we say that at, uh, at v sub 0, the velocity is 0, at time 0, the velocity is 0, and the displacement is 0, and it started with a push. So it started at this position, for example, actually we should be looking at the spring system. Started here and it's started with a push. It has a velocity of zero initially, and so it moves on from there. So we can say that it's a sine function under those conditions. And really what happens realistically is no matter whether it's technically cosine or sine, it's just referred to as a sine wave uh, either way. So it's just referred to as a sine function in each case. All right, now let's look at uh, velocity as a function of time. Recall that velocity max is the tangential velocity, so going off in this direction. All right, so I'm going to take a look at this system. I'm actually just kind of zooming in on this right here. And in doing so, what I need to do is express, uh, in this triangle here, I need to express which one of those angles is equivalent to angle theta. So if this is angle theta here, this will be angle theta up here. And I will show you uh, my little proof for showing that. So I have a couple of 90 degree angles down here. And within this inner triangle, with any triangle, all three angles need to add up to 180 degrees. So if I have theta and a 90 degree angle, this up here must be what we will call alpha. And this here is a 90 degree angle and so i can say that within a triangle here if we have a 90 this would have to be angle theta in order for these two to add up for 90. i also have the same scenario on the other side which i can uh, put in a different color just to make it a little bit easier to see so with that angle of 90 degrees, and I also have this in green, this angle here of 90 degrees. So looking at the 90 degree angle with green, this must be angle theta here. If this is alpha, this must be theta, and if this is theta, this must be alpha. If this is alpha, this must be theta. Kind of a, a bit of a long proof in that way, but it's my best way of uh, explaining the why. All right, now that I've done that proof, let's express uh, velocity in terms of V max. So if we have V max as the hypotenuse and V uh, as the opposite side, then what we would say is that the sine of angle theta, uh, which is equal to the opposite over the hypotenuse, then that is in turn equal to uh, V over V max. So we multiply each side by V max, and we get, uh, get V. Uh, it's a little bit more complex than that because we'll have to make V max negative. Uh, so V will be equal to negative V max times sine theta. It's negative because when we look here, as we move some angle theta, positive angle theta, its velocity will actually be negative viewed from the observer. So here's my expression right there. Okay, and again, since uh, theta can be expressed as omega t, then I'll substitute that in. So velocity is equal to negative v max 
uh, times the sine of omega t in parentheses. And you probably know where I'm going to go with this next. I can then also say that this is equal to Vmax. Uh, not really sure why I put those parentheses there. Let me fix that. So that's sine theta there. OK. And we have uh, times sine of 2 pi t over period. And so that should be familiar because uh, omega is equal to 2 pi radians over the time for one cycle, which is period. And then we can also express this in terms of frequency again, where we have negative Vmax times the sine of 2 pi f t. So we've taken out the period and expressed it in terms of frequency as uh, instead. So these are equal to velocity. All right, now that I've put that off to the side, let me also express uh, velocity max in terms of its spring constant. So relating this back to a spring situation. So let's relate, just like we did before, that velocity max in that regard. So we've got, uh, since the velocity is equal to omega r, remember from our circular and angular motion, so that means that uh, we've got omega is equal to, again, uh, 2 pi over r, the, excuse me, not r, period, uh, the number of radians per unit time. So we can say that the v max is equal to 2 pi r over period. I've simply just substituted in the uh, angular velocity into this equation up here, so just did a little bit of substitution. And since r is equal to a, we can say that 2 pi a over t is equal to v max. And of course, since we can also relate it in terms of frequency, we can say this is in turn equal to 2 pi a f. Let's refer back to this here. We can say that since this statement here is true that I'm starring, we can uh, say that Vmax is equal to 2 pi a f. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to substitute in 1 over 2 pi times the screw to, of uh, k over m in for the f. So let's take out the f and substitute in 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m. Two pi cancels out, and we are left with v max equals a times the square root of k over m. So another useful equation that we can use to express the velocity max uh, for a spring system in terms of uh, its mass and spring constant. All right, and the last thing that I want to do is express uh, acceleration uh, as a function of time. The first state will, statement I will make will be Newton's second law, which is f equals ma, or otherwise known as a equals f over m. Since uh, We are talking about a spring system here, and the force being applied is equal to negative kx. We can express this as a equals negative kx over m. And remember that x is going to be the same thing as a in this case, because it'll be um, its maximum displacement. And that's over m. Uh, excuse me, I think I misstated this here because this is actually going to be times cosine theta uh, in order to convert that into amplitude because if this is x, in order to relate x in terms of amplitude a, uh, we have, remember that x is equal to uh, cosine theta 
A. So I had to make that that bit of a change there. Remember that theta is equal to omega t. So with that in mind, I will say that the uh, acceleration is in turn equal to uh, negative ka over m uh, times the cosine of omega t. And as you can predict, we will see that negative ka over m is equal to cosine 2 pi t over period. Remember this whole thing is uh, theta. The 2 pi t over period is theta. All right, let's uh, hold on to this equation for a second. I'm going to do a little bit of a sidebar uh, motion here. And I'm going to say that the force at its maximum is going to be equal to its mass times its acceleration uh, maximum. And that's going to be when it's on the farthest edge one way or the other. I can say that the acceleration max is equal to its force max over mass. And of course that means that it's also equal to Ka over m as well. So that's going to be the acceleration max. Just to explain this a little bit further, uh, this is essentially Hooke's law, so the force is equal to the spring constant times the displacement, and so the force, or acceleration max, is going to occur when it's got its greatest displacement from equilibrium way out here. That's why it's the A. We can also express this in terms of frequency, and so what I will do is I'll say that again, since I've got this equation up here, let's go back down, I'll just rewrite it. I'll say that since the frequency is equal to 1 over 2 pi times the square root of k over m, since that statement is true, then I can solve it for in terms of k over m. That will uh, allow me to multiply each side by 2 pi and then take the square root. So if I have uh, frequency times 2 pi, and excuse me, not square root, but square each side, that will equal k over m. I can now substitute this in here. This will give me the acceleration max as equal to 2 pi f squared times a. All right, so I've gone through pretty much all the derivations that I wanted to. I just wanted to express one last thing. I wanted to talk about uh, a pendulum and pendulum mo motion. And so with a pendulum, a pendulum's equilibrium position would be here, and it's displaced some angle theta. Uh, from its equilibrium position. The force of gravity is mg, and we have the force of tension acting the, in this direction here. Opposite to that, we can set up a triangle so that way we have angle theta here, and in fact, let me use a different color. In blue, I can express the force, the restoring force along its path. Its restoring force along its path is going to be equal to the sine of angle theta times mg. And since we have a sine theta here, what we can say is this, is that if this angle is equal to 15 degrees or less, we can say that uh, sine of angle theta, okay, if small, 15 degrees or less, if angle theta uh, is small, sine theta is essentially about equal to theta. It will be within about 1%. And if this is true, then that means that it will exhibit uh, what is essentially harmonic motion, simple harmonic motion. All right, and just to save on some time, I'll just uh, throw these equations for pendulum motion here, uh, assuming that we have a small angle. Uh, the time period is 
proportional to the length of the string. So basically, as we increase the length of the string, the amount of time it takes for it to go back and forth will increase. And of course, the acceleration of gravity on the planet that you're on uh, is relevant as well. So if you go somewhere else, you can actually find the acceleration of gravity from a pendulum. This is, of course, expressing it as frequency as a function of length and the acceleration of gravity. All right, hopefully this helped, and hopefully this recording will, will save with voice this time. All right, have a good one.